All right, we have here a, um, a question about Notre Dame, and uh, mm -hmm. you got that in the program notes as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you all saw yesterday, but the fire in the Notre Dame. Um, so the, the, I mean, it looks like they've saved a lot of the structure, and they'll be. I'm amazed at what they were able to do, given what. It didn't look good because I, I was no. watching it live last night. Uh, I guess on on some European TV station where they were they were showing the live uh, efforts, and it didn't look like they were going to save much because it, it it looked like it was undermanned and the fire was everywhere, but. It was a pretty, pretty dramatic pictures. And I have to say, I was really moved by this cathedral burning down, which is kind of bizarre because I'm an atheist. It's just a cathedral, who cares? Mm -hmm. um, but it's a symbol. And if you think about it, it was built in, in around the, over 200 years in the 12th and 13th centuries um, in Paris, which was at the time becoming the center of learning in uh, in uh, in uh, in Europe. Uh, it's about the same time as Aristotle is kind of making the first few little footsteps into back, well, not back, into Western Europe, uh, thanks to those those evil Muslims um, who, who preserved them in their libraries in Spain. And, uh, you know, so Aristotle is coming back. This is about, I mean, if Avernus is a little, not Avernus, uh, what's his Averroes. name? Averroes, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a little later, but it's, it's generally the same time in European history. This is the birth, in many respects, this is the birth of Western civilization. Now, the cathedral, in many respects, represents the opposite of Western civilization because it represents faith and everything. But it is a, it's tiring heights, it's, it's grandeur represents that period from the between the dark ages and uh, the renaissance between the dark ages and ultimately the enlightenment when they reject with the rejection of, of much of christianity that is it, it's symbolic in many respects it's symbolic of kind of the rise of the west and the rise of western civilization uh the architecture and the grandeur of it and to see it burn like that in france right now given everything going on in france right now struck me as very symbolic to kind of the decay and the death of, of the West. And uh, it, it was quite, I found it quite striking and quite emotional mm -hmm. to watch it burn. It's a beautiful building. I remember being in Paris many times, looking at it, being inside of it, I think once or twice, but uh, certainly looking at it from every place in Paris, you could see it. it's the second tallest building after the Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very much a, again, a symbol, I think, of the rise of the West uh, and the rise of Paris as a cultural center, which it begins to be with the Notre Dame, the Cathedral of Notre Dame. That, that roof that was destroyed, I guess two thirds of it was destroyed. And there was this whole section of it that was constructed of some intricate structure, you know, interweaving structure of beams, wood beams. And I read in one article that it said that engineers hadn't completely understood even the principle on which it was able to stand, you know, that and, and bear weight and all the stuff that it's done for centuries. So um, a, a little bit of a, a engineering feat as well, one that wasn't fully comprehended. And now they can't test it and do all the different things to well, supposedly they've got scans of everything, so they can recreate it in in okay. minutes, details. Because recently, some American had, went in there, some sci uh, scientist or uh, academic, and and scanned everything in in great great detail, so they'll be able to resurrect it. I would like to see. I mean, I think it would be cool. Is instead of that gothic um, thing, they put some modern. I mean, I just think it would it would be all right. We're building the modern world on top of it. It, it would just because I hate Gothic architecture. I think it's ugly. Well, uh, someone someone on Facebook was saying that that you're talking about the particular spire, right? Yeah, spire, that was built in the 19th century, but it was done in the style of the Gothics. Right, right, right. And then, of and course, somebody mentioned this on on Facebook. There's the whole emotional connection of Notre Dame to Victor Hugo, who of course wrote the beautiful, beautiful book. Um, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, which I encourage everybody to read. It's just a 
one of those books that you, you, you know, you, you, it's hard to get out of your mind once you read it. And it's, it's so emotionally engaging and the ending is so emotionally eerie and sad and depressed, but it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful book anyway. Um, and, and I think, I think, I, you know, for who go Notre Dame was a major, a, uh, you know, a major feature of what made Paris, Paris and uh, always played, a, I think it played a role in more than just that book. It made a role in a couple of books. Um, anyway, so. Uh, so kudos to the firefighters who yeah. were able to save so much of the art. I understand that a lot of the art was able to be saved and yeah. most of the structure and just, Wow. Somebody's somebody's saying here cynically that why don't we blame Trump for lighting the fire because we blame him for every other problem in the world, right? Irrationally so. Um, I, I am happy that the firefighters didn't uh, follow Trump's advice about dropping uh, water from airplanes on the top because it, you know, that would, it turns out that most experts believe that would have destroyed the structure. Mm -hmm. uh, much more than it did that that volume of water just dropping would have been a disaster anyway so